Okay, so I'm going to run you through how to do a little bit of basic calculator work. Uh, sorry, excuse me, a little bit of um, regression work in your calculator and how to um, do average rate of change in your calculator. So to start off, I'm just going to use this data set that I have on the screen. Um, so step one is we just need to get it into our calculator. Now, where we're going, where you go to put data in is you have to use the stats button. So you'll notice right here on your calculator, it's just to the left of the arrow, there's the button that says stat. So when you click on that, you should see a screen that looks like this. Now, um, remember, if I go too fast on anything, um, you can always pause the video, rewind, watch again. So don't forget about that. Um, so now we are in, we are in the stats menu and we need to put the data in. So I always try to encourage students to think along the lines of things are organized in the calculator. Uh, they have a placement and they have a, a rhythm. So think about what we need to do. Notice where there's a tab here called edit. So everything in here is where you're going to edit. Well, we need to start, up, start off by just editing. We need to start off by putting our data in. So we hit enter. And you'll notice my calculator already has data in it. So depending on what you have done in a prior class, you may or may not have data in your calculator as well. So let's talk about how to get data out. So what you're going to do is you need to arrow up to your columns. Or notice we have L1 and L2. So I'm going to arrow up to the L2 using just the arrow keys. And I do not hit the delete button. If you push the delete button, um, you don't delete the data. You delete the L2 variable. And you don't want to do that. So what you do instead is you want to clear. So right here down below the air, down arrow, we're going to, have to press clear. And notice our list of values has now disappeared. So when I hit enter, they actually take hold and they all go away. So now I'm going to arrow over to my L1 column, arrow up. Notice I have a list of values. I am going to clear those values. Then I hit enter and I now have a nice blank slate to work from. So how the calculator defaults, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. L1 is considered your independent variable and L2 is considered your dependent variable by default. So therefore, L1 is your x's, L2 is your y's. So in this problem, if we wanted to make a, uh, a chart or, or make a regression for years and jobs, let's define years to be our independent variable and jobs to be our dependent variable. So the x's would be the years. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 1997, 1998, and so on and so forth. You go ahead and enter all of your data. And then for your independent variables. And then you'll notice, um, I always like to look at this, notice it's waiting for a sixth entry. So if I go ahead and count, I've got one, two, three, four, five entries. So that's perfect. I put five things in. I have five things in my table. It's a good little double check. So now we'll go over here and do our Y values. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 660, 725, 775, 810, and 840. So now that I have my values in, we say, is there anything left for us to do here? Um, we've got all of our data in. So I, I always recommend to quit out whenever you're in a special screen. Just get yourself back to your main your main screen, your cursor screen. Um, so notice right here above mode, in my calculator is blue writing, um, The I want to quit. So I'm going to press second mode, and that'll bring me back to my main cursor. So now we need to determine what kind of data set are we looking at? What kind of regression do we want to do? Do we want to make a linear regression, a quadratic regression, a cubic regression? So we need to look at it. So the very first thing we need to do is go to our y equals, or this is one way to get there. I'm going to go to my y equals and make sure there's no other graphs that are going to show up to kind of cloud the, the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and clear any graphs that may be in here. You can go ahead and clear them out. And then the next thing we need to do is we put data in for our stats. So what we need to do is turn our plot ones on um, because by default, plot one is L1 is your X's, L2 is your Y's. So in, and how you turn them on is quite simple. You just arrow up, you hit enter. And now if I arrow down, you'll notice there's a black box around my plot one. So therefore uh, they've been turned on. 
So now when I hit graph, all these data values that we just put in um, will show up on the graph. So the next thing we need to worry about though is the window. Uh, notice this window is not showing me any of my values. So I will go ahead um, and press the zoom button because there is a very special, uh, and you'll notice the zoom button's right here, um, right in the center, the top row of your calculator. Um, oh, I, I guess I will point out a little bit of, of thought if you haven't ever noticed this. Everything in this top row of the calculator is for graphing. So whether it be putting in an equation you want to graph or looking at adjusting your window of your graph um, or zooming on your graph, tracing something on your graph, or just graphing. Um, so you get the idea. So um, in the zoom, you will notice if you arrow down, there's a very special one that fits what we're doing called, whoops, there it is, number, option number nine, zoom stat. What it's saying is it's going to zoom your window to fit all, all the data you just put in your statistics button in your statistics area. So if I hit enter on that, you'll notice it automatically fits um, my data to the, to the window. Now, if I take taking a quick look at this, um, I'm just going to grab it so I can draw on it real fast. There we go. If when I looking at this data, um, to me, it kind of looks like it's curving a bit. It does not look linear. Linear to me would trail off in some way, shape, or form, or might come between them all, but it wouldn't look, doesn't look like a great fit. It definitely looks like it has a curve. So I'm going to say this data looks quadratic. Um, so it looks, it looks like it has the curvature, so to me it looks like it kind of looks like it's going to start curving around, so it looks quadratic, but if you want to argue something else, that's fine. This is just for practice. Um, so what we'll go ahead and do here is now, now that we've decided I'm going to do a quadratic regression, I'm going to go back to my stats window, and then now, instead of editing, I'm done with that, I want to calculate. So I'm going to go ahead and arrow over to calculate, and as we go through, um, notice this is for statistics, for statistics, et cetera, et cetera. We're looking for things with the, pre, with the, uh, with the idea of reg, uh, regression. So we have a linear regression, quadratic regression, cubic regression. So no matter what you decided, the, the steps are all going to be the same from here on out. You just choose which model you think it fits. Hit enter. And notice the default in the new operating system. You have this neat little menu. Uh, in the old operating system, I'll show you what that looks like as well. Um, but in the new operating system, it shows you the X list. Your X values are in the L1 column. The Y list is in your L2 column. So we're going to leave those alone. And where, what I'm going to do is have the calculator store our equation for us, so I don't have to type anything in. Now, this button pushing is the same whether or not you have the old operating system or the new operating system. So what our goal is here is we're going to tell it which y, y1, y2, y3, which line we want it to type the equation into. So everybody pay attention here. All right, so what we're going to do here is press the VARS button which stands for variables. Now you'll notice here, I don't want windows or zooms or GDBs or whatever. I want the Y variables, so I'm going to arrow over. Now, the good news is in our mathematical world, we have a dud parametric or polar or other fun equations. We just know functions, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you'll notice now we get our list from our Y equals button. Just it's asking you, where do you want me to put it? So I'll go ahead and put it in the Y1 line. So what now the calculator is saying is take your x values from L1 column, y values from L2 column, and store the regression equation in the y1 line. So now if I go down, hit enter, the calculator does the work for me. Um, and if you want to have the r values, the r and r squared values, um, I'll show you how to do those very quickly. It's very simple. They're here in the catalog. So we go second catalog. Um, and I'm going to go, you can either arrow down until you hit the letters D, because what we're looking for is diagnostics on. Um, and notice the alpha button has already been pressed. Alpha is the green button. So I'm looking for the letter D on my calculator. That's right here. So I'm going to press see the letter D in the alpha. So I'm going to go ahead and press that button. Jumps me straight down to the Ds. So now I just arrow down until I see diagnostics on. There we go. Hit enter. Hit enter. All right, so there we go. So now when I go back and do my regression, I apologize for not getting this 
the first time, quadratic regression. Go back here and store my regression equation, vars, y vars, function, y1. There we go. Now it gives me my equation, but at the right below it, it tells me my r squared, which is telling me it's a 99% fit, 99.9% uh, .9 fit. It's a pretty good fit. Um, if I were to hit the y equals button, that was the whole point of the storing the equation, is it's taken our a value, our b value, and our c value and substituted them into the quadratic equation for us. So you notice it's already in there. Um, so now when I hit, or not equation, quadratic, uh, uh, standard form of quadratic. So we have it typed in already. So when I hit graph, I don't have to do any extra work. There it is. Looks pretty good. So now I have a quadratic, I, I've done a regression in the calculator. Um, I have typed it in without me actually having to type in all those crazy numbers. And you'll see if you arrow over, they're all in here just like normal. Um, it just, it's a little bit of a time saver to do the Y vars. Uh, and then there's lots of tricks we can do later in the semester using that var, the Y vars. Um, so it's a good thing to kind of pick up on. Now, if you have the old operating system and you're saying, all right, how do I get the vars? Um, or how do I get my regression? Well, all right, what yours does when you go quadratic regression, actually, maybe I can cheat it this way. Let me see if I can change the mode in my calculator to the classic and see if that will do it. Okay, so let's see if this does the same thing. So we're going to go here, we're going to go stat, we're going to go calculate, we're going to go to quadratic regression. Oh, nope, it still gives me the list. All right, so here we go. You ready? What I can do is cheat. Clear this out, second, enter. There we go. So when you did this, you got quad reg on your screen. Um, and what that's just saying to you is you want me to do quadratic regression and if you just hit enter right now it'll work it because the calculator automatically defaults to l1 being the x's and l2 being the y's so if you wanted to type in the the uh the answer into the the uh, y1 line at this point all you need to do is press vars go over to y vars function y1 so now when you hit enter the calculator will do the exact same thing that the new operating system did okay so there we go. We've got our regression equation. We've got all that. Wonderful. So now the next thing I want to do is just kind of show you a little trick that we can do um, for average rate of change. Okay. Average rate of change. The concept is the same thing as slope. So just instead of talking about slope, we have a little bit of meaning when we talk about average rate of change. So if I wanted to find the average rate of change uh, from 1997 to 1998, um, it would be y2, well, the general equation we should know for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So therefore, my y2 would be um, 725 minus 660 over 1998 minus 1997. Everybody buy that? So how am I going? How I can do this in the calculator? Um, so let's. So so that would be great, wonderful. But now, what if I ask you to find the average rate of change of? Um, let's just pick some strange values. Nineteen ninety-seven point three uh, to nineteen ninety-eight point four. All right. So here comes some fun ideas. So. In the calculator, we can have it calculate values for us in lots of different ways, but one way I like to do it, especially if I have to do a lot of average rate of changes or I have to do a lot of repeated calculations, um, is I'll, I'll do them in my y equals and I'll have it do some calculations for me. So, But let me just show you very quickly. Um, th what we're going to end up doing here is if I get vars, y vars, where I typed in my function, and so I have y1 on my blinky screen here. And if I use a little bit of um, function notation, so I do something like, let's say, y1 parentheses 1 and hit enter. Um, well, that wouldn't be very meaningful. But what that means is I have now taken my y, whatever equation I had in my y1 line and typed in the number 1. Now, remember, our, we were doing our, our calculations in years, so that means in year 1. Um, so that wouldn't be very good. Let's let's pick something a little more meaningful. Let's do 1997 and see what we get. 
There we go. So you can see the function gave us out the value of 660.85714, and this was 660 from the table. So that looked pretty good. Um, so that's kind of, that's what we're going to be using in here in our y equals line, that concept. So if I wanted to calculate this average rate of change, okay, the big idea, uh, it's a it's a pretty simple one. Um, we just need to use our formula. So we need our y1 value evaluated at 1998.4 minus our y1 evaluated at 1997.3 all divided by 1998.4 minus 1997.3 that's what we need to type in so remember when you type things in the calculator you always want to put parentheses around your numerator and your denominator um, let me see if I can move this picture out of the way there we go so there we go um, so that's what we're going to type in so parentheses for the numerator I'm now going to press vars y vars function y1 and I want my y1 to be evaluated at 1998.4 um, and then I'm going to subtract that from my vars y vars y1 evaluate at 1997.3 okay so and then that would be my whole numerator so I close my parentheses divided by my denominator which is 1998.4 minus 1997.3 and now that's my y2 values so if I go over here and I can go into my table and look at my y2s I see the there you go there's my values. Now you might be saying, why is that helpful? Why do I care? Well, what if I didn't want to always do 1998.4 minus 1997.3? What if I always wanted maybe 1998.4, but then I wanted my values to change in my other? So I wanted to find the average rate of change between 1998.4 and 1990, uh, 1997.3. Then I wanted to find it 1998.4, then 1996.3, that or whatever. So what I can do here is instead of so if I'm going to do everything always from 1998.4 I'm going to leave that alone but if I'm going to let this other one change I can replace that with just a X and then same thing down here in the denominator instead of being 1997.3 I can replace that with just a X so now when I go to my table I'm going to see my average rate of changes for whatever year I am typing in. So let's go ahead to our table set right here above the window button and let's change it. So instead of being an automatically typing in values, let's go to ask, have it ask me for which independent values I want. So now when I go back to my table, um, so if I type in the year 1990, my Y2 line is now giving me the average rate of change between 1998.4 and the year 1990. Or I can type in 1996 or 1998. And so you get the idea. So <clears throat> it's nice to kind of use this. You can, you can use your Y2 line as a formula where you're plugging values into your y1 line. Um, and so the trick is just to use that function notation from your 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 y1 line. Okay. Whoops, excuse me. I hope you found this helpful and um, we'll use it in class.